Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. In the previous video, I went on a bunch of different adventures as I recovered from the burnout of TOA. I'm now at the point where I've accepted that going for full Missouri is going to be a long-term goal that I'm not rushing anymore, and it's time to go back to the other goals I want to work on. The question is, what other goals was I working on that led me to TOA? Like, how did that fall into my overall plan? Let's rewind back to the release of Desert Treasure 2. After it came out, I decided to make a video for each of the DT2 bosses. I did Vardorvis, then Duke, then Leviathan, and the next video I had just started Whisper when I was like, actually, you know what would be nice for Whisper would be the Venadurbo. But all that time, I was doing consistent chambers in between everything else I was doing. I was learning CMs with EYM Loki. Well, it's kind of funny because yesterday she was just telling me that you sound like an owl. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow. I can't believe I just and I was just having a lot of fun with chambers in general. So I was like, you know what, since I'm doing a lot of chambers, why don't I hold off on Muspa and go a bit harder on the raids? Because in the off chance I do get a Tebow, that would speed up Muspa. Meanwhile, if I did Muspa first, nothing I get from that boss would speed up chambers. And after nearly 700 raids on this account, and 2000 raids across all my accounts, I ended up getting a Tebow for the first time from chambers. But after getting it, I was like, well before using it anywhere, Masori would be nice. So me and my duo teammate Spookdog went back and forth between doing Arma and doing TOA. We did get full Arma, but we only got Missouri Helm. Eventually she went back to working towards Max while I was pulling many sweaty days grinding out TOA to the point where I'm now absolutely burnt out from it. So that's where we are today. We're skipping the Missouri and I'm going back to my previous path of going for the Venerbo so I can use it at Whisper. So with all that said, welcome to my new series, Venerbo or Venerbo, whichever comes Venerbo. Good morning, friends. So, the Venator Bow from the Phantom Muspa. In order to get the Venator Bow, we need 5 Venator Shards, and the Venator Shard drop rate is 1 out of 100. The last time I did Muspa was February of 2023 because I was going for the Saturated Heart. I got to 195 KC, and along the way I only got 1 Venator Shard, which means I'm going to have to go for 4 more. So we're going to head over to the Muspa Lair, and the last time I did Muspa, Desert Treasure 2 didn't exist. There was no Ring of Shadows, so there was no Teleport that brought you right here. I had to use the Weiss Teleport. Look at my scoreboard, zero deaths. Let's see if we could change that this video. Also, last time I did Muspa, there were no combat achievements. Now there are, there's 13 of them total. I have three of them that were automatically completed. It's just the KC tasks, the 1KC, 25KC, and 50KC. A longer term goal of mine is to get the master tier of the combat achievements done, which I'm still pretty far away from, but when I do get there, it makes thralls last 50% longer, which would be really nice. So I'll try to knock out a bunch of these along the way to the Venator Bow. Last time I was here, I used a Mage Switch, but this time I'm trying out range only. I also have a T-Bow too, so it's a bit nicer than having just the Bofa. Uh, and there's two ways you can do range only. There's kiting around the room like you would at Ceridomen, or there's the step back method. And I want to learn the step back method. This was my first time ever trying it, and so far it seems like it's pretty easy to learn. I've only done one kill so far. Normally when you're praying melee, Muspa will hit through prayer, but if there's one tile between you and Muspa on the tick it attempts its melee attack, it'll always hit zero. So you have to step back on the right tick. And the way you can tell what the right tick is, the secret is by trying it and feeling it. I can tell you to count X number of ticks, but honestly, that's not really going to help as much as just telling you to go there, try it out, and feel the timing. There is a visual cue that I think helps, which is when Muspa hits the ground and the snow pops up, and it's a bit after that when you click. And one more thing that may help is turning on the volume for the sound effects. It's my first kill at Muspa in a very long time, and I forgot my Book of the Dead, so <laughs> just uh, ignore that. It's really nice I don't have to worry about having long trips because of the Ring of Shadows teleport, being able to teleport directly back here. I could take all the time I want to do combat achievements or learn certain methods. I mean I could do that before too, but it's a lot less time investment now than having to run from the waste teleport. Ooh, I got Phantom Muspa Speed Trialist. That's for a sub 3 minute kill, which I had previously, but not only did I get another sub 3 minute, but I smashed through my previous PB as well as 242 before. And this one is going to put me at 200 KC. I have to kill Muspa while it's completely surrounded by Spike, so I'm going to try to do that. Okay, I think we should be good to finish it off here, unless this part needs to be covered. Oh, where do I go? <laughs> okay. Is that it? 
Yes, that was the combat achievement. Space is tight. Feels good. Feels good to get things checked off. Ancient Icon. These are one out of 50 from Muspa and it's the upgrade to the Ancient Staff. But I already have four because you need one for each of the different quartzes that you get from the DT2 bosses. But you can break them down for 5k Ancient Essence each. To start the step back, anytime Muspa is coming at you from far away, when its true tile is next to you, that's when you want to step away. And from there, something I started doing, which is helping me with getting the timing, is walking more than just one tile. If you're still trying to figure out the timing of which tick is the one you're supposed to be stepping back, you can give yourself some extra wiggle room by walking two or even three tiles in between hits, or even more tiles if you really want, but then you know that somewhere in that time frame is when Muspa is doing its melee attack, assuming you're still taking zeros, which you should be. And once you get used to that over time, you can narrow it down more and more and it'll be easier to figure out which tick is the proper step back tick. There's a new PB 212. This was an insane clip to randomly capture. Because of the timing, camera angle, and position of everything, my arrow looked like it was directly under the thralls attack. So it looked like some kind of water arrow and I did a double take because I was like, whoa. Good morning, we have a game update and the main part of today's update is they added more combat achievements. Uh, they add them to Scurious and to each of the DT2 bosses. For Scurious, there's five CAs, and for the DT2 bosses, there's nine each for a total of 36. Whoa, <laughs> I opened this. I went from, I was at 295, and it went up to 304. I got nine combat achievements auto-completed, which I assume are just the uh, KC things. When I went to bed, I was at 380 points to the next tier. Now I'm at 465 points to the next tier. That's such a big setback. I've only been doing one kill trips, which I find very beneficial for a few reasons. First reason is it saves prayer pot because I'm always low prayer at the end of the fight. So I save like two doses by restoring at the POH instead of waiting for the boss to respawn and using my prayer pot. I also get guaranteed full spec to use for the smite phase because of the ACB special attack doubling the chance for bolt procs. It can save a lot of time. Otherwise I'd only have one spec back by the time I get to that phase, unless I was wearing light bearer, but then I'd be sacrificing the DPS from the archer's ring. And most importantly, if you were paying attention to the timer in the bottom right, you'd see that restoring at the POH and telling back takes the same amount of time as waiting for the boss to respawn. Oh, oh Venator Shard. As you can see, I just put a mage uh, set up in my inventory. This is my first kill trying it because I noticed the uh, Tebow is pretty bad on the melee phase. So I just want to try this once and it just so happened the one kill I tried with this I get the shard. Uh, it's number two out of five. I didn't really like all the switching though so I'm going to go back to Tebow only. I did the combat achievement. I'll have to check what that is. Kill Muspa without taking any avoidable damage. Oh, <laughs> it kind of took me a while to do that, huh? That was exactly 250 KC. Oh my gosh, two Venator shards in one day. <laughs> That's awesome. This is reminding me that as I get closer and closer to getting the Venator Bow done, I probably should start to actively go for some of these combat achievements. So next one I'm going to do is going to be a walking only kill. We should get the task done here. Yes, can't escape. It definitely helps to know how to do the step back method. For the next combat achievement I want to do, it's to get 10 kills in one trip. So I got the mage switch for this because I think it's going to make it a lot easier. And we'll see if I can manage this. First kill of the trip so far, starting off very strong. That is perfect. Very ideal. Ooh, a new PB. We got to refill on the supplies too. Here is kill number 10. Got plenty of stuff left over on the ground. So let me uh, pick this stuff up, grab my chips, and dip. That was nice, got it done first try, and now I can go back to doing my nice, relaxing one kill trips. For the most part, after you've done Muspa a few times, it's a really easy fight but there are some very particular ways you can quickly get comboed out. So if you're playing a hardcore, beware of this happening. That was so fast. It's a PB 201. No, I have to get sub two minutes for one of the combat achievements. So many pop-ups in the chat box. We have our group chat uh, drop notification set to 100K and I got the ancient icon as one of those notifications. Oh, another icon. Before I wrap up this day of Muspa today, I wanted to talk about my kills per hour. As you can see here in the bossing info plugin, today I averaged about 15 kills per hour, but that's because today I was kind of trying to focus extra hard because I wanted to see what my max kills per hour was. And by that, I mean every time I stopped to do a clue scroll or every time I went to use the bathroom or type on Discord for an extended period of time, I would pause the timer. 
when in reality, over the last couple of days, I wasn't doing that. Overall, I was averaging about 10 to 12 kills per hour. So this is if I'm like going max focus, but is closer to 10 kills per hour. Another way to look at it, this would imply that I spent five hours at Muspa today, but because I was pausing the timer in between doing things, this was more like seven hours at Muspa today. We left the house today, by the way. That's why I only did seven hours. Well, I'm about to try streaming Muspa, which means there's a very good chance that I'm going to ruin this perfect streak I have here on the Muspa scoreboard of zero deaths. Doing some Tebow only. Tebow only. It's like as soon as the stream turns on, I become ten times more cringe. Planning to play Skate 4 when it releases? Nah. I never even owned any of the other skate games. I only played them at friends' houses occasionally. For, uh, what was it, Christmas, Spook actually got me uh, a fingerboard. I've been playing with that a lot lately. That's even better than Skate 4 because it's real and tangible and teaches life skills like how to use your fingers. There's an ancient icon. How would you say Arma Armor as an Australian? Wouldn't you just say like Ama Ama? But like if you're Australian and you're saying like, nice arma or nice ama you wouldn't know if they're saying nice armadil or nice armor you just have to assume based on the context clues but even then it would be hard to find the proper context for which they're trying to say ow 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 <laughs> <laughs> Bro, my ankles are broke now. I forgot to record the important YouTuber clip thing. I hit 400 KC at Muspa. The double Addy Or. 2 2 2 2. Uh, if, imagine if the time was 2 22. That would have been even crazier. Do you fingerboard? Oh, hey, vendor shard it. Error 404 KC not found. Yes, dude, one more to go. That means. Instead of being two kills away from being done, I am now one kill away from having the Venator Bow. Yeah, this is pretty much on rate. 404 KC, four shards. Any kill could be done. Next thing you know, I'm over 1k KC. <laughs> Next kill is the one, surely. Any back-to-backs? What did I just do? Oh, wait, I just got, I hit two minutes. <laughs> that, that was kind of like a back-to-back. Hey, I was not, I didn't even realize the kill went by that fast. Beat my PB by one second. <laughs> I actually thought I got the Vendor Shard for a second. For every 100 Vendor Shards in the game, on average, one of those was a back to back. Oh wait, is that Rice Cup? Okay, wait, this could be a PB. How fast was that? PB? 147, oh my god, I smashed through the previous PB. You know, I actually heard about, uh, there was this mix up at this school one time. Uh, it was a, it was an animal only school, and they they accidentally had a human that transferred to the school because his last name was Lion. It was a terrible mix up. Anyways, in his gym class, his partner was a monkey. <laughs> Me when I go on Reddit, Reddington. That was not even funny. So anyways, if you want to come keep me company when I stream, I have a huge streaming announcement. You will be able to find me streaming live at twitch.tv slash wild underscore mudkip. Might not be the same day this video goes up, but eventually I'll be live. I have never made dragon bolts on this account before. Stream's over, by the way. Very good success. I uh, did not die, and also got that one banner shard. We got the one more to go. But uh, I'm going to make some dragon sapphire bolts, maybe like not too many because sapphire bolts are very niche. I'm probably only going to ever use them for Muspa, so maybe just like 200 for now. Cool. So got these made and a little bit really lasts a long time. I don't know how many I go through per kill, but it can't be more than maybe a couple per kill. And these really should upkeep themselves from the drops you get at Muspa. I've done, oh wow, I've, I've done a lot of kills today. Just today, I've gotten over 500 dragon bolts or unfinished bolts from Muspa drops. I'm not going to show the total loot right now though. I'm going to save that for the end when I finish the bow. Virtual 113 range level. Before I go to bed and all this gets reset, I want to show I did 108 kills today. That is easily the most Muspa I've ever done in one day. I Muspa ask you how it went. Terrible. I must ask you a question, but I'll shave it for later. We're off to a terrible start today. Someone's EP. <laughs> you're not EP, you're 27. Grow up. And we're back. Oh, <laughs> I do that a lot where I, 
go into the wrong hole. I mean, crevice. Never mind. Wow, Spook, thanks for the invite. She's got 99 mining. Wait, because someone else is doing an elite clue, I have to wait for them to finish. Oh my, I've been on the other side of this before. There's 500 KC at Muspa, so I'm sure all of you are very excited to know now that I am officially over the drop rate for the fifth vendor shard. Oh my god, this could be a PB. That was like really fast, but was it fast enough? One, oh, I, I tied the PB 147, so I beat it by a tick. Wonder if the joke about why did the chicken cross the road, wonder if it was actually a really deep joke about like the chicken crossing over to the, the afterlife and the chicken died crossing the road. Wonder if that's the true meaning of why did the chicken cross the road and you've all never realized that your whole life. I'm gonna see how many mystery boxes I have. 147. Now think about it. What's more impressive, a stale baguette or having 147 mystery boxes? That's why I don't open them. Ah uh, yes, the toad bada. More like, I wish I had a bad clue step. An ancient icon. It's been a while since seeing any kind of unique. Okay, my last kill for today. Another full day of the Grumbler boss is complete with no Venator Shard. But today I did 105 kills, so I'm happy to get over 100 kills in one day. And if you're curious about my average time per kill, I'm getting 249 with Tebow only. This has been so much more fun than doing TOA though. Like, it's so much better than getting one kill per hour at a boss. I always like to go to Muspa with the four dose range pot. It doesn't really matter too much because I do one kill trips, but I just like to start with four doses, but I'm almost out. But that's fine because I usually only use one or two doses at a time, which means I have a bunch of other dose variants that I need to decant. So now I've actually got over 800. I do always use one dose of range pot per kill. Or at least I try to remember, I do forget sometimes. Since I'm potentially always one kill away from being done with Muspa, I figured I should knock out the rest of the combat achievements that I want to knock out. This one is to drain Muspa's prayer with three different sources in one kill. So I used Smite, the Sapphire Bolts Eproc, and Greater Corruption on the Archaea spellbook. I've never used that spell before, so it took me two tries to get this combat achievement done because the first time I thought it was like you use the spell on the boss, but no, you use it and it just makes your next attack have a chance of inflicting corruption, which is a prayer draining effect. And yeah, that was a very easy achievement to get done. It's time for the Salamander only kill, which also means I'm gonna need, it looks like Hairlander Tar. Luckily, I have a lot of Hairlander and I have a lot of Swamp Tar from Zora, wait. Yeah, Swamp Tar, that's the one. <laughs> all from, pretty much all from Zora. Got my setup all ready to go, got my emergency stamina, got over a thousand Hairlander Tar, which I think is gonna be way more than enough. And hopefully I don't mess this up 10 minutes in. You kind of need to do the step back method in order to be able to get this combat achievement done because Muspa hits through prayer in its melee form too. And it's more than just tiny chip damage. I mean, even when praying melee, you could take 15 plus damage every hit, but if you step back on the right tick, it's always gonna be zero. You may notice that I'm walking back, but you don't have to do that. You can run two tiles back and it's the same thing. You just start on the same tick that I start my walk. And then we got to the prayer phase. The wiki says that using corruption doesn't fail the task, so I used greater corruption. I don't have that notification setting turned on that tells you when you fail combat achievements. So at the time, I didn't know for sure whether or not that had ruined it, but I was pretty sure I was fine. I trusted the wiki in this case. When you use a salamander, you have to stand directly next to the target. You can't stand multiple tiles away like you can with range. So it's kind of like a DPS check at this point because every four hits, it sends out spikes, including one on the tile that you're standing on. So eventually, Muspo will be completely surrounded by spikes. Or if you really wanted to, you could count its attacks and then step back on its fourth hit but I wasn't too worried. Uh, kind of running out of space here, but we did it, yes. I hope the corruption didn't mess it up. Okay, yes. <laughs> uh, it's a relief to have that done. Man, the time on that, 10 minutes and 40 seconds. There's only two combat achievements left for Muspa. There's the speedrunner one, and then there's this one, which I don't really want to do. Huge milestone right here, 600 musty KC. I'm starting to run out of the Sapphire Dragon Bolt Seekin, so I'm gonna start making them in batches of maybe one to 200 because like I said before, I don't want to make too many because it can be a waste of Dragon Bolt since this is really the only place I would use these Sapphire Bolts at. I'm going to switch my spellbook back to their regular spellbook so I can enchant these bolts and I wasn't sure which runes I need to enchant them, so. 
I just brought all of that. <laughs> oh, I must have missed it by a kill or two, but at some point I was very close to all sixes in my total XP. And also my KC is getting close to 666 KC as well. Ancient icon. And that was 700 KC at mustard. Oh, I just got an ancient icon. I, I just spam picked up the loot. I didn't realize it. Now, not to spoil too much for the future, but this elite clue that I just completed, because I have been stacking up caskets, this was number 200. Whoa, another ancient icon. That was two kills apart. <gasps> yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's a cool angle too. Yes, the final Vanner Shard, 710 KC. Oh, the fifth Vanner Shard. The last one was at 404 KC. So it was 306 kills since the last one. To make the Vanner Bow, it looks like we don't need anything besides the shards. There's just a combine option. It is non-reversible, yes. There we go. There's no animation or anything. Boom, look at all those league points from equipping the Venerbo. How much Ancient Essence do I have? Almost 400k. So if we, or, oh yeah, I had some in my inventory, so it's over 400k. And if I use that on there, you can charge it up with up to 50k. So we'll fully charge that up. And now we have a glowing Venerbo. Well, I guess for the last hour or two of the stream, I'll I'll go do Zora very quickly because I probably won't be here too long, but I'll just show the collection log for Zora. Need pet and mutagens. Here's my last kill for today. I did just over an hour. I got 20 kills, and if you're curious what the loot from one hour of Zora is, it's apparently 1.7 mil per hour, 1.9 mil total. So what is the Venator Bow? Well, it can fire any type of arrow, and here's the stats. It's nothing too special, but it's the passive effect that makes it so good. When it's charged with Ancient Essence, that enables the passive effect, which is when attacking a target in a multi-combat area, the bow will try to fire another arrow into a nearby target, dealing damage up to two-thirds of the original max hit rounded down, and then it could bounce again to hit a third time. The bow always uses one Ancient Essence per attack, no matter how many targets it hits. It's a four tick attack speed on rapid, and if you were to fire it non-stop for an hour, it would use 1500 essence per hour, which means every two Muspa KC will give you one hour of non stop firing. So, not bad for Iron Man to upkeep, in my opinion. You can mine Ancient Essence just south of where the Muspa Lair is, but just like with Fishing Sacred Eels, it's way slower than just killing the boss. And it looks like for every hour you spend mining it, you'll get an hour and a half worth of Venerbo firing. But maybe for some people, it's worth it to get a little bit of extra mining XP while AFKing and getting Ancient Essence. Now, where would I use the Venerbo? The main places for me would be for Whisperer and Grotesque Guardians. But it's also great for AFKing Slayer in a multi-combat area, especially where the monsters aren't normally aggressive. Say you're fighting Abyssal Demons. As you're fighting them, some of them will walk closer to you, and the ricochet effect of the bow will make them aggro onto you. You kill them, they respawn, and the bow will once again keep aggroing them as they respawn without you having to click again. So it's really nice for AFKing. And some other ideas where you can use it could be Barb Assault, Nightmare Zone, God Wars maybe with the minions, and of course, we can't forget everyone's favorite, the Baba Puzzle Room. When the Vendor Bow is charged, it's untradeable, but you could take out all the charges anytime, you get everything completely back, and then the uncharged Vendor Bow is tradable, so we could trade, whoa, it's 48 mil, we could trade that back and forth. Want to show off the scoreboard here, I never died a single time at Muspa, surprisingly. So it ended with 710 KC, which ironically, I, I was like, that number sounds familiar. That was the KC that I got the enhanced crystal weapon seed for the Bofa. I had 710 CG KC, so maybe 710 is a lucky number for me. And now for the fun part, the loot tracker from Muspa. It only tracks 706 kills, not all 710, but it's close enough. The total KC, 710, probably took about 65 hours to get, but I did start at a bit under 200 KC. So in this video, I've done a bit over 500 KC, which means it took me maybe like 45 hours to get. I realize you can't see these three herb seeds. So we got Snapdragon, Ranar, and Torstal. The GE value of all this stuff is 124 mil, but I am a couple shards short of where the expected drop rate would be. So if you take all that into account, it probably would come out to about 2 mil per hour is what I averaged at least. I started this video pretty much exactly 7 days ago, almost to the hour. It's been 7 days of real time and in-game. 
uh, according to the time played, it has been 78 hours of in-game time. But not all of that was spent at Muspa. The remaining time that wasn't at Muspa was basically all spent fishing. There wasn't much variety this video. But the fishing XP I gained was a bit over 1 million XP. There's a couple more things I want to mention though. The first thing is that if you have the Ectoplasmator, you'd want to have that in your inventory when you're killing Muspa because you'll get 170 prayer XP per kill. I probably should have gotten that before doing this grind because I would have gotten like, well, over 100k prayer XP, but whatever uh, I don't have it so and the other thing I want to mention is that the frozen cash that you get from Muspa there's a 1 in 500 chance you can get a vendor charge from these and as you can see I haven't opened mine there's two reasons why I haven't opened these the first is because I was really enjoying Muspa I'm not in a rush or anything and Zora is probably one of my favorite bosses and this reminds me a lot of Zora it's very reminiscent of it because of the fact of like doing the one kill trips and the kill speed itself and then the drops like you can break down the icons for more essence and the essence is kind of the equivalent of Zora scale so everything about it feels very similar to Zora and I really like Zora. The other reason is because it's one out of 500 for the vendor shard from a frozen cache and if you think about it what's more impressive having one vendor shard or 500 frozen caches. I think having 500 of these would be more impressive. And final thing, here's my collection log for Muspa. I got everything except the pet, which is one in 2,500. And I know what you're thinking, wow, seven days of this boss, it must have been quite a long week. And you're right, it has been quite, quite the week in, <clears throat> indeed. So with that, <laughs> Okay, wait, let me redo. Next video, I'm going to whisper. And with that said, make sure to check out my Duo Teammate Spook Dogs channel, link below in the video description so you can check out what she's been up to with her half the progress while working towards Max. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you have a great day, and I will see you again next time.